that. Okay, for this session, and uh, the materials can be downloaded later from our the Apricot uh, website. You can download all the materials. Okay, and also the other sessions. Slowly, all the present presentations will be on the website. So. We don't. Uh, we will not uh, uh, request you. You should do. No, no, no. Mm, mm. no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you, for example, it's a kind of policy where an ISP mm. can announce slash twenty three and yeah. maybe slash twenty four, but like slash twenty five are not accepted in the internet routing table, global internet routing table, right? Some people might, but it, it's it's a like. Yeah. A exactly. Chance. Exactly. So mm. What is the similar thing with IPv six? I mean, like we get slash thirty two, mm. right? But uh, when we do the aggregate announcement. Mm. So the lower, the smaller than slash 48. So the smallest is the slash 48. Mm. So they will filter this. Okay, so if I want to announce to my upstream, to the internet, I can announce a uh, prefix up to slash 48. Yes. Alright. So I will not beyond 48, right? So maximum slash 48. Yeah, this is our recommendation. Okay. If you do this, your route will not go very far. Maybe after two ISP already be, be filtered. Oh yeah, 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 that's good. So you are a good example in the internet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, very good uh, example. Okay, thank you. And then for the for the who is object uh, types, here we mentioned the person. Oh, it seems that doesn't work. Oh, it's working. Why? Where is? Okay, so it doesn't work. For the person, for the person means the who are maintaining these resources, you can find the person's name and his address and his email, his number, and then the role. For the roles are the, maybe for one company, the for, for a larger company, for this resource, this block of IP address is not maintained by one person, maybe a group. They are working as a group, one network uh, operation group, and then we can define a role. So this role is like a group, group, and then under this role, there are multiple persons under this role. So they are in this group, we have different several persons. And later, I can see nowadays, if you come to APNIC to create some num some number resources. We would uh, recommend you to use the role object uh, to maintain one resource. So for the one I block of the IP address, um, maintained by the role, okay, not maintained by role is the uh, you can find the contact person is one role is one role, and then under this role you can find multiple persons, and but the person is still one object uh, in the who is database, and you can find okay this is the person maybe Mark and the other person maybe is Jensen and the other person, so these are the who is object type of the person and the role, and the persons can be classified into the group uh, roles. And then the INET number, IPv4 address block. So IPv4 address block and uh, 103 blah blah, which block you, are, you have got. And uh, INET 6 number is the IPv6 block, uh, IPv6 address block. And what are these blocks? And then auto number is the autonomous system number. And uh, so maybe you have applied uh, one uh, AS number and then this AS number also will be re should be registered and uh, then what are the maintain uh, what are the contact uh, role and then you can find the related information and domain here domain I still want to use oh it's working domain this one is related to the DNS reverse DNS and uh, you you can input this information first on the my APNIC you need to register for this. For this address, and then what is the domain? What is the domain you need to put this information? And then the route, route six. So for the prefix, okay, I got this block of IP address, and I use this block of IP address in my network. And m maybe you need to announce one block into the internet. If you announce this block of address into the internet, then this will be the route. Okay, this doesn't work again. The route or IPv6 route six. So you will create, you will create the route objects, and uh, 
So these are, you can see, okay, these are related to IPv4 block, IPv6 block, and uh, autonomous number, and then the domain. Later, we will see the reverse domain paths in the following paths and the reverse DNS domain. And then the route, route object, and IPv4 route, IPv6 route. So you, maybe you said, okay, if I didn't announce in, in my APNIC, you can, it, it will not affect uh, your information in the who is uh, in, in, your, in your implementation. Okay, on your network, uh, you announce this prefix into internet. These are independent from what you have configured from my APNIC. So you will configure, okay, I have announced a, sl a slash 23 into the internet. Okay, so you will create, uh, you should, because you are configuring your network. And then the maintainer, 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 this one is related to what, re, what, who can change the, this resource. Because you can see, so this who is database will be used by, will be published. So we don't want other people to change this information incorrectly. So we have the authorization and the, based on the maintainer. So maybe some, I, I am, am my AP, I have my APNIC account, but I cannot change your resource. Why? Because your resource has his maintainer. This maintainer is also one object, also one object. This maintainer is not under my account, so I have no rights to change your resource, to change your resource. And uh, later we will see the maintainer. Maybe sometimes you a little bit confused with the maintainer and the maintainer lower, and later I have the example. And the IRT is about the abuse handling team. So who are the abuse handling team and the contact person? They, nowadays, the IRT is required to be registered, to be input into our main APNIC. So the other person, they, when they for, so lead to report some abuse information to, for about this block of IP address, they can contact this IRT team. Okay, so these are, the, not, these are not all the objects in who is database. These are just the mainly Many some re objects we will describe in the following parts. Okay, for a new member, if you are a new member, come to APNIC and then we will create this for you the row objects and the IPv4, IPv6 I objects and the autonomous number. If you have applied the autonomous number and then the maintainer objects, we will create basically. These will be created, but the resources is up to which resource you have applied. So role and the maintainer and IRT objects are the mandatory. And then, so here, this is the who is search. So when you go to APNIC, there is the website and we have a search. And then if you go to the detailed search, you can open this page, and uh, all these search can be used. For example, I just uh, searched to one. Oh, I cannot. <laughs> Sorry. I should not move that. Now, so here, when you go to APNIC, it's okay, I first uh, I will keep this resource. This is one resource just from our participant. So here, from, from APNIC, this is APNIC portal, and then you can go to here for the who is search, and uh, you can type one block of IP address, and then we can get the information. So we can get the information for this block of IP address. You can see. Maybe you saw. Oh, you saw the INET number. Blah blah. What are, what are these? So here is the INET number, and then this is the block of this is a slash sixteen slash sixteen, and used for this network, and uh, just from one of my our participant. And so I just use this resource. And uh, then these are the description. These are description, and uh, so we can see the these are the admin contact and tag contact. This can be one person or one row object. 
So person or row object can be here. And uh, also maintained by some maintainer. This is maintainer. Maintained by is the maintainer. And the IRT, this is the IRT. And so who, where is IRT? You can see from here. And uh, maybe I'd better use uh, our training, some information. So we can query from here. So here is similar, and this is about the IPv6, so INET6 number. So network name, description, country, and uh, admin contact, and the technical contact, uh, and then maintained by, this is a maintainer, and the status. Later I will mention the status, and IRT, this is IRT, and then who, if, the, if we have any IRT, we need to contact the IRT, and then we can contact this person at the main contact and the tech contact. So this is the information. So you can see this information are not like the programming and we don't understand what are these. We can we just need to find the contact information. You can consider this is like uh, the form book and we can check who we want to find. Okay. So these these are the example from who is database. And uh, you can see here, just the search. You can type the block of IP address and then search the information. And uh, in the detail, you can go to some less specific or more specific. Later, I will explain what are, what are these. Less specific, more specific, and the exact match, and the inverse attribute is match, matching to which attribute you want to search. So this is the who is a query. You can see for the who is a query, I don't need any user account, and then I can every anyone can query from my AP, from APNIC web, web portal, and then you can come here to search the information. Okay, so we will continue to our slides. So you can come to here and uh, to search the IP addresses, and uh, so. If the information is uh, invalid, so as I mentioned, if the email is unreachable and the the phone is, the phone number is uh, telephone number is unreachable, and then you can tell us through this way, or maybe you can also direct our help desk from the help desk chat. Okay, and uh, so we need to keep all this information, keep all this information to be updated. Everyone should be responsible, and. Uh, so here the trace route and the look, looking glass can be used to trace track the upstream provider if needed. And the use the who is. Here I just show you how to use the who is, dat who is database. And uh, we can see there is some link information. Maybe just now you have seen some information. Use uh, some contact, admin contact and uh, also some tech contact is some number and uh, alphabet like this is some com compilation like this so what does this mean i didn't see the person i didn't see the person who are they this person so we are representing one person one person by using a nick handle a nick handle okay so use seems like a unique id unique id of this person we generate a unique ID for one person and then to tease the contact information. So maybe you ask, where can I find this person's information? Because I said, okay, come back to this who is page. So I said we need to find the person's information. So here is one of the person's information. And how can we click from here? You can see this is the, for this block of address, admin contact is pj392 ap so we create a, we create a unique unique name for this user and this is linked if you click that one so we can go to this pubdu this is our he's from our member service so he's maintaining our network information so we can find his his numbers here and then we can contact this person his email and uh, these resources are maintained by this maintainer so maintainer you can also click to find uh, this maintainer 
okay, maintainer. These maintainers are under which group? Under this group, and so we can find the this person. So these are the these are our our the link link between the different resources. So through this way, you can find who is the person I, I want to find. So this is the nick handle. You can see from the resource. From the resource, this is the need handle, and the maintainer is also is also can be clicked, and then can be linked to the maintainer. Only when you have this maintainer, and then you can change the resources maintained by this maintainer. Okay, and uh, so for the IPv4 and IPv6 address information, you can see here is the example. The example from our the IPv4 IPv6 address. And then admin C, then you can see this is one nick handle for the admin. For this is a row object. Later you can see, in our example is a person object. He, later you can see this one is a row object. Can be related to several person. And uh, for the maintainer, and we have the maintain by and the maintain the lower and the maintain the routes. And this is about the maintainer. Okay, IPv6, and the status is allocated LAN portable. I hope you still remember. I have explained the allocated, allocated for the further distribution, and the non-portable. So this block is from the one ISP from the ABC Internet. It's not from APNIC directly. So this is non-portable. So these are the t status of this resource. That's why yes. Yeah. So to be aware of the, the email address uh, could be used for spam. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so how to prevent that? How to prevent the? Uh, e so you mean some some yeah, because? Some, maybe oh. some uh, bad guy uh, mm. uh, crawling uh, all the email address from this uh, information that are who is database and use it for spam. Right? Yeah, uh, but uh, how to say we because this information are public. So as you said, maybe some people they use the information wrongly. They didn't do the correct thing by using this information. But if for the spam email, we can only recommend your on your side. You you on your mail mail server. You need you have the limit checking of the spam email. <laughs> but uh, for APNIC, we can we we cannot stop these things. We, our responsibility is to make all this information updated and uh, correct. <laughs> Thank you. I, I know you are dealing with the DS servers, so you you met a lot of the spam emails. Inform. Yeah, actually, yeah, <laughs> I, I'm afraid of uh, maybe some bad guy could have uh, crawling the who is database and maybe uh, send advertising email or something like that. Yeah. 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 But uh, we 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 cannot uh, stop this from from our side right? because we will we will, we our responsibility to keep this information correct. Yeah 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 yeah. This is this is uh, yeah this is the effect for the people's email the information yeah, and the also the phone number and uh, yeah this information. But uh, this information all are really public to everyone. Everyone can access. So. For th that's why for the further some further delegation we can keep this private. So yeah, but from APNIC to your side, this part should be published. Hmm. Okay, so here for the IPv6 one IPv6 and the IPv4 is similar, and then for the person object, person object uh, here is the, I mentioned that there is a nick handle, so unique unique combination of the numbers and alphabet. And to represent one person or maybe one row, one group, one network operation group. And then you can see here is one person's object. We can see the name and the address, phone number and the email. And then, so here is the nick handle. So we didn't, because maybe people have the same name. Maybe people have have the same name. So we just use the nick handle to to 
maintain this to represent this person and the maintainer this is the maintainer so if anyone wants to change wants to change the name and this mandatory information mandatory change the information and then he needs to have the maintainer he should have the maintainer under his account otherwise and he cannot change this person's information and the raw object raw object i mentioned is a group of person and this one can easy our is our administration why do we say that later i can see first i show you what is a raw object you can see this is one team so for this company one team one network engineer team and are maintaining these resources and then so for this team and here we have the help desk email and then we will put the person's person's email here a person's link handle here maybe you have multiple admin contact you can add multiple entries you can create multiple entries in my APNIC and then will be published in the, in who is database so you can add another admin contact for the by using the other person's person's name and then create here this is his nick handle is a i n t 1 dash a p and maintainer so here you can see the raw object so i mentioned for one resource in the in this part the admin admin contact and technical contact can be a raw and also can be a person and uh, so if this is by under one person if the resource is under one person under one person so if this person he will leave this position he said oh i will move to to, to the other departments or maybe leave this company and then what can we what should we do you need to update the information so you need to create a new person object and then replace all these for for the resources you need to replace all this to be another person to be another person so for this part you need to change for every resource yeah we, we have the bulk uh, updating in the my APNIC portal but this will affect all the resources and uh, for if you are using a raw object how can we make the administration easier is like this so we create the raw objects so all the persons nick handle are under the raw objects and the raw objects for your resources for your resources admin contact we only use the nick handle of the of the raw objects so even this person he has left your company you don't need to replace for all the resources because here still the same role still same role so we are still using the same group same team but for our each for each resource you don't need to change you only need to change in the in the raw objects to replace okay using an, another person's need handle am i clear here so i think nowadays if you come to APNIC to apply the resources create the new objects and normally we are using the raw objects so for this under this row several persons need handle under this and then will easier for us okay so here is the comparison between so here is when this person has left kx17 has left and then we need to replace and we only need to change in the raw objects so here make the change easier and uh, after we have compared the person and the raw objects here is about the database query i mentioned we have the less specific more specific exact match i in the in our web portal you can choose one of them by default by default we'll go to the less specific less specific what is less specific more specific or does this mean here there is a hierarchical to represent you can see this is the larger block this is a larger block and from the larger block to the smaller group so a smaller group is for is from the less specific to the more specific part okay so from a from a pinnacle we have got a slash eight slash eight and then we will do the 
delegation and uh, maybe it's a slash 20 okay because nowadays the policy is not slash 20 maybe before he has got a slash 20 and then for the slash 20 we will go to do the further distribution further distribution so who is the compare with the last one compare with the slash 24 the slash 20 is less specific is less specific because this is a larger block and then compare with the slash 20 slash 20 slash 8 is less specific less specific so for example if now I want to query I want to query slash 20 if I choose the less specific he will go to the slash 8 and all the less specific will go to 0 0 0 0 so from the small blocks go to the larger blocks is the less specific way that's specific so go to the higher one from ISP go to APNIC go from APNIC go to IANA so this is the less specific larger block and uh, if you choose more specific I am now query slash 20 if I select uh, more specific then we'll go to small blocks small blocks and then we'll see all oh, for my customers and maybe some more specific delegations and uh, can be displayed and uh, but uh, this part is up to the ISP maybe he didn't put this information public so we cannot see this information if you select a more specific so maybe I will use some one example to show you what is less specific and what is more specific here 202.64 why on my screen is not okay so here if we go to 202.64.00 slash 6 okay he is using slash 20 and uh, so by default uh, is the first level less specific will go to the first level specific so including himself so here here is for the slash this is for the slash 20 slash 20 and then what is the block and then if I go to the all less specific one you can see you can see from the largest the all IANA block and then go to the 202 slash 8 and then go to the slash 20 slash 20 so you can see from the top to from from 000 and to the slash 8 to slash 20 and then no more specific further distribution so if I select uh, more specific ones let's see whether we can have some more specific ones it's uh, up to the the network whether they have defined so you can see no entries found because for our ISP they can do the further delegation but uh, they don't need to publish this information they will input this information in my APNIC but uh, these are in a private database private database so but from APNIC to him this side should be published should be published so here is for the if you are doing the more specific queries sometimes you cannot uh, get the information because the ISP they didn't publish the customers information outside okay am I clear this part <laughs> any questions <laughs> Yes, yeah, because these are some useful useful hints can be used uh, to query the information. So whether you want to yes, is it, uh, is it possible to display uh, all route objects including uh, inet num block in single query? In single twenty or the uh, if uh, we put hmm. uh, one nine two one six eight point zero point one hmm. and then uh, uh, it will display all the route objects which. Uh, Hmm. Then it, uh, can it possible to display all route objects uh, if I search that IP block? 
Uh, this IP block is showing you the IP block and uh, not related to route objects. But in case of the, if we search any IP, then it shows the person of person, maintainer, all of code, all objects. But mm. it never displays the router, all route objects, only single route objects. Suppose. Mm. Okay, uh, I select. Any IP. You mean for the object type? I not a router object, router object. If Rout. we display all router objects, that's in the maximum. Mm, this is not a router object. I, I don't think they have created. So it's up to whether they have created a router object in, the, in that part. But this, this is all about the IP address, not the route object. Hmm. So because this is about the IP, I, I, hmm. I want that uh, using this parameter, using this uh, parameter, I want to uh, hmm. display record I, uh, IP block, including all route objects, rela related route, route objects. Related to, oh, uh, you want to, but what is the relate the relationship? <laughs> you, so, so you said for this slash 20, all the routes are under this. So okay, let's see for this slash twenty. What are the route objects? Can we see? And uh, here he said he has the maintained the routes. And uh, for this one, we can only see for him he has this m route. He has created the route under uh, this one. He has he can is. Uh, for he can use this maintainer to create the route objects, but we cannot see all the from here, no. Hmm. But you need to use the which specific routes and then create. And uh, yeah, and uh, you can, how to say, for the route objects is also related to whether they have created in, uh, in my APNIC. Maybe they have announced, but they didn't create in my APNIC, so you can also, we cannot see from the route objects. Okay, so here is for the query for the who is database and uh, inverse queries and uh, we can use some hints from here to do the queries. And uh, for here, for the public and private, I have mentioned uh, some parts. So some information will be published, some information can be private. So which part should be public from the, from IANA to APNIC, from APNIC to, to our members, directly to our members and then more maybe to NIR, to VNIC and to CNIC and then from VNIC, CNIC to their members. All these should be published, should be published. But for the further, for the further assignments and uh, allocation can, can be private, can be published, public. So this is up to different uh, ISP. Maybe they said, okay, it's, all, it's only is used for my own infrastructure, not uh, related to my customer, and maybe my customer also agree, and then you can publish this information. And uh, maybe, I, and I think uh, based on the percentage, I think most of them, they will keep the customer information be private, be private. It's up to you, it's up to you. So, but uh, from from APNIC to you, from IR, from NIR to you, this part will be published. So everyone would know, okay, APNIC has delegated uh, this slash 22 to this company, we can see. And uh, for example, maybe from, from CNIC, they have delegated one block to the other company. So all these can be displayed uh, in APNIC, in the whois database. Okay, and uh, so, for the visible information, you when you add the because we said this is up in added in my APNIC. So when our members, when you add the customer assignments into my APNIC, you can select, you can select a private or public. I think now these, these are very clear. You can select from your from our portal, and then continue for the another one maintainer. Maintainer is an important uh, object in my APNIC uh, who, who is database. Uh, 
And here, maintainer, maybe you can see the maintainer, what is the information. And this maintainer, when you create, when you come to APNIC, become one of our member, get one block of address, we will create a maintainer for you, create one maintainer. And but for the resource, the slash 22, APNIC delegated to you, this block is maintained by APNIC, is maintained by APNIC. And uh, the maintainer, only when, for example, you have your maintainer, and then you can change the information with, with, your, re, with your resources, with your resources. But uh, for the slash 22, you cannot change the block. You can change the contact information, who are the contact person, and uh, this information can be changed. So for the maintainer, we need, there is a password for maintainer. But for, if you are using my APNIC portal to change the information, you're only at the beginning when you add this maintainer into your account, you need to put the password. You need to put a password. But uh, later, when you want to use, you don't need to input the password again. So this is a difference maybe with the other RIR. So some other RIR the, for their portal, they, every time they change anything, they need to put the password, put the maintainer's password. But for APNIC, if you are using my APNIC portal, my APNIC portal, you, if you already add the maintainer into your account, the first time you need to put a password. Here we have the authentication options. So first time you need to put a password. Later, later then you don't need to put the password again. Every time you change this one resource, if this resource is under this maintainer, you can change directly. So this is using the APNIC portal, my APNIC portal. But uh, maybe some of you are using email, uh, using email, email to the auto, auto data, database, and then if you are using email, and then at this moment uh, using email, you every time you need to input your, you need to put the password. So this is for another case for if you are using to the, uh, using the email method to update the information. But uh, if you are using my APNIC portal, so you don't need to add the password every time. You just have that one under your account. Okay, so here for the maintainer, maybe later I can open my, my own my APNIC account to show you the maintainer. Maybe because some of you I know, maybe your company is our member, but uh, you are not the one who are maintaining the, my APNIC account. So for the maintainer, here is the format. Here is the format. We created that one and then, and then for the admin contact, uh, technical contact, uh, these are the raw objects, raw objects. And uh, okay, so for the maintainer is mainly used to avoid, so maybe you can see the maintainer, maintainer, then our purpose is to have the maintainer to avoid the other person to change your objects. Okay, if they don't have the maintainer, they cannot change your objects. And uh, so maintainer is uh, I under the maintained by and uh, maintained, uh, maintained lower. So maintain by and maintain lower. So some people maybe will ask, what is maintained by? We have, we know there is a maintainer, but maintained lower. So they jump jump out and maintain lower. Maintain lower is used for the sub delegation. For example, I got one block is used for the allocation. Then I need to do the sub allocation and the sub allocation. So I need to divide for the after I gave him a slash twenty six. Then I need to create a new block. Who can create a new block? The maintain lower, maintain lower. He can create uh, new objects slash twenty six. So, who has this maintain lower maintainer, and then he can create create uh, the lower blocks, lower blocks. Later, I have example. And the maintain the routes. So for this block, for this block slash twenty two, who can create the route object as he said? So only the one who has the maintainer of these maintained routes, and then he can create the route objects, create route objects. So the other people, they cannot. You don't have this resource. You don't have this resource. You should not create the route objects for the other person. So how to guarantee the other person cannot create route objects for you? So we are using the maintainer under the maintained routes, under the maintained routes. So only the person who has the maintainer of this one and then 
can create the route object under this block, under this block. So this is some kind of, kind of the security path to protect the, our whois database, not to be uh, changed by the unauthorized person. So here we have an example of the authorization mechanism. So first you can see here is a query. We can also use do the query from the terminal, from terminal, um, not only from the web page. And here is a, who is WH? WH means the WH means the from which website I'm doing the who is query. I'm doing the who is query. And so here he queried the slash 32 and the name and then the description. After that, you can see we have the country and the admin maintainer. Now we move to maintainer. You can see we have maintained by and maintained lower. Okay, so for the maintained by is maintained by APNIC hostmaster. So if this block slash 32 is directly from APNIC, directly from APNIC, and this is allocated portable. Allocated portable, that means I apply this address, is used for the further distribution. So this is allocated, allocated and portable because I directly from APNIC, from APNIC. So because I will use this block for the further allocation, that means I need to create sub-blocks. Because maybe give one customer slash 24, give another customer slash 27, I need to create these blocks. I'm not assignment. Assignment, that means I will use this block in my own infrastructure. So here, for the further distribution, how, who will create the further blocks? APNIC will not create the full further blocks. So this one, who has this maintainer? Maintain the AU APNIC training. Who has this maintainer? Then he can create the sub-blocks, slash 24, slash 26, slash 27. So it's created by the accounts, which who has this maintainer? Who has this maintainer? And then who will create the routes? Who has this maintainer? So the accounts. Because maybe for one company, you can have multiple accounts. For one engineer, create one account. And, but this is only related to the, the roles if they need. Okay, so with this, with this maintainer, and then he can create the routes. He can create a routes. So this is about the maintain by and maintain lower and maintain the routes. Maintain routes. This is one example. Is this one clear? <laughs> kind of. <laughs> so don't worry, I have some other comparison. Maybe because because people say if this is allo if this is not an allocation, this is assignment. So what is the difference? And if this comes to our customer, then who will be the maintainer? Who will be the maintainer? And uh, the maintainer is not the is not uh, here we what we mentioned about a maintainer. This is just uh, the I uh, like uh, a security element of this resource. So you have this maintainer under your account and then you can change the resource. Okay, so before I really go to the next one, the example, I can show you the maintainer and, uh, oh. oh, this is related to here. Okay, later, it's here. And then I will use the example for different type of the resource. So I use the IPv6 as an example. As an example, so some resources are assignments, and some resources are allocation. Some are resources are for the further distribution, assi assignment, assignment. And uh, first, uh, I can I will have a look of this one, the assignment portable. So I am one company, and maybe I am from the create a portable. Uh, uh, I want to get a portable assignment from from APNIC, and this block is only for myself. I will not do the further distribution. Okay, so who will be the maintainer? Maintained by, and this resource status is assigned portable. Yes, this is for the assignment, assigned, not the allocation. And the portable means I can change my upstream ISP. I can change. And if for this block of IP address, 
he will have maintained by maintained by APNIC hostmaster because this block this block is of course is created by APNIC hostmaster and uh, cannot do the further allocation so he is uh, directly used in my own infrastructure so assignment assignment and uh, there is no maintained lower no maintained lower because because we will not create the sub, sub blocks so here no maintain no only maintain by and uh, maintain the routes I will announce prefix and I want to create the routes into my APNIC who will create here who has the maintainer of the network A who has the maintainer of network A so he will he can create the route objects he can create a route objects for him for this block for this block so this is the for one case if this is assigned a portable address and then will be maintained by the hostmaster and the routes will be created if you have the maintainer if you have the maintainer of this network you can see it is different from the previous one previous one and then continue for the the one what we have seen the member allocation you can see for this large block for this slash 32 he is used for the further delegation for the further delegation then we we, have, we will create the small blocks you can see we need to create the small blocks but the name is allocation portable allocation portable this is without problem yes because this is for further distribution and can is directly from APNIC so this is portable and maintained by maintained by this resource cannot be changed though maybe you'll say why maintained by always APNIC hostmaster because we don't want you to change this block slash slash 32 because only APNIC will define okay this slash 32 is given to you you should not be able to change to be oh slash 31 I want to enlarge change to be slash 31 nobody has this rise only APNIC hostmaster we said okay I gave you a slash 32 maybe if in the future okay you get another block nearby and then and so only the hostmaster he can change the information for this block for this block but uh, for the further further delegation this block who can create you you are the maintained lower so you can change the you can create the lower the hierarchical so here is the hierarchical for the lower parts you can use if you have this maintainer if you are under the network B I have this maintainer element under my account under my account then I can create a sub block like this and also a sub block like this can be created can be created and the maintainer routes so for under this block IP of IP address if I want to create the route object so only when you have this maintainer when you have this maintainer then you can create the route objects you can create a route objects so this maintainer this maintainer is under your name and then APNIC can create this maintainer for you creating this ma maintainer for you and then you have this maintainer under your account so here these are the most uh, two important uh, example important example and uh, continue not finish it yet for some this block of IP address his status is assigned yeah this is an assignment is not used for the further delegation I will use this one in my network infrastructure no customer I will not do the delegation one block to another customer no and non portable because this is from ISP not from APNIC I need to return to this ISP if I don't use them I need to return to ISP I cannot take them away so it's non portable and for this one maintained by is the maintainer is the so this block is created and maintained by who by which one not by APNIC now it's maintained by this ISP so this ISP he created he created this block 
and then he can change. Okay, now I give you a slash 48. Maybe later I want to, I will give you a, another block and then I can enlarge this block to be a slash 44. And then this is created by, he, by him. So he has this maintainer under his account. And then for this block, for this block, the route objects will be created by this, by this member, by this member. He will create the route objects for this customer. And uh, this is assigned a non portable for the nano one. You can see for this block, this is the allocation because he is used for the further delegation, for the further delegation. So for this part, his status is allocated non portable. You can see same you can see all these status from who is database from who is database and then for this one maybe now you are a little bit tired with the maintain by maintainer or maintain routes and maintain by this is maintained by the maintainer because it is created created by the member allocation and you can create I am the APNIC member and I have my APNIC account and then for our corporate contact, you can create a maintainer. You can create a maintainer and make this resource using the maintain, maintain lower. So for the accounts, maybe some engineer, regional engineer, and then you give him account. And then he has the maintain lower with this maintainer. Then he can, he can create the sub block, sub block of this one. He can create the blocks. So then you can have the hierarchical rights authorization to your engineers. So maybe some original engineer, he's only, he can only ma manage for this block of IP address and he cannot change the other parts. And for some, some maybe the core engineers, maybe they have the maintainer of the whole network, network B, and then he can change for the, this part, which delegation to the others. So you can limit the rights for different network engineers accounts by using a hierarchical hierarchical maintainer. So here is the how to, what is the maintainer and the maintain lower and the maintain routes are used. Maybe not all of, the, all of them are used in your network, in your network, but uh, so I hope these are helpful for you to understand with all the elements with your resource. And now I'm trying to log in to one of my APNIC. So I can show you. In fact, my APNIC is in the next uh, part. Okay, here, my APNIC. Because the, for the maintainer one, they need the authentication. So at the beginning, if you are the corporate contact of APNIC member, and then you will have at least, for example, APNIC training, he will have this maintainer under his account, under his account. And then for the, for the other engineers, maybe they are the normal accounts, uh, normal contact, and then you can, you can tell them to add this, add this maintainer. 
and this will need the corporate contact to approve. You need to provide the valid password, valid password. So you have the password. That means through this way, through this way, you are authorized to change some related resources. Because some resources, all the resources, only when you have this maintainer, you can change. So we can see the some summary of the resources. And then for different resources, what are, who are the maintainers? You can see these are maintained by the APNIC hostmaster. And for some, you can, here is the private, move to private. This is the public record and private record. And then you can you can put the for the sub delegation you can put a, maybe in the public maybe in the private. So these are some uh, about the my APNIC portal. Maybe we will come back again. So here for the maintainer, I showed you what is a maintainer. Just under your account, you need to add the existing maintainer. Okay, I don't want to make you confused with the with the what are the maintainer and maintained by this information. And just, uh, yeah, and we, I just mentioned this one is just uh, for the authorization, who can change your resource. We want to avoid uh, the unauthorized person to change your resources. Okay, and uh, IRT contact. IRT contact and uh, this is, uh, we need to, nowadays we need to put this one in your, in your re, under your resource and then provide the contact email. If anything happened, the people can contact your network. Okay, so this is what we can provide. And then we, we put this IRT information and some, maybe for some organization, the IRT, they put the same as a network engineer, but uh, we recommend you have your different group. One, some, People are network engineer with the infrastructure implementations. And for the IRT is for the security parts, so different uh, responsibilities. And uh, then they, people can report to the right person to, hand, to deal with the problems. Okay, and here is the IRT object. Okay, this is IRT. So IRT also under the related to one IPv4 resource, IPv6 resource, and then this is the contact information. And the geolocation, last part is about geolocation. Geolocation is about the geolocation number of your, of where the network is, where the network is. And then you can, you can, this information should be input by yourself because you know where your resource, your network is. And then you can put this information, the geolocation on, into your MyAPNIC portal and then update it in who is database. So this is what we recommended, and uh, can be also this information also can be collected by the geolocation providers. Okay, they can collect the information, so they can show what uh, from for which block of IP address are from which geolocation. Okay, so hmm. Mm. Uh, this is up to you. If you put the wrong information, then the wrong information will be here. APNIC uh, cannot check wh where you are really using your IP address. Yeah. So how about all, uh, the and or they Oh, you, uh, you not only the geolocation, you mean? So for if you if you if you say some information is wrong, yeah. then you can you can tell APNIC, and then we will contact them. But sometimes we don't know it's wrong or right. But I mean, if <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is uh, everyone's responsibility. Yeah, yeah. So there, we we cannot guarantee. Uh, for example, the router object is also everyone you need to con configure. But if the network engineer he did a typo, yeah, he did some mis small mistake, and uh, then so we we hope our our members will, is responsible to provide the correct information. Yeah.
Yeah, but if you see any wrong information, you feel this is uh, with some concerns or with some problems, you can tell APNIC. You can ask APNIC help desk. Yeah, yeah. like example country, example, uh, mm. But I think for this concern, it will be less because if sir, if you said they they said this network should be in, should be in Singapore, but they you but you said it really in Hong Kong. I don't think they, they it would have because this is in the application. Yeah, because they need to. Oh, I have this slash twenty four will be used in Cambodia, or it will be used in Singapore, and our network is like this, and APNIC will follow this what he demonstrate. And then we will follow this his material to check whether there, there is a network. And yeah, he needs to provide the evidence. You have a network here, maybe about the pop and the, the yeah equipment room. And so I think for for this information you mentioned about the country, problem the the mistake will be very low and the ratio. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So here these are about the who is the database. So. Uh, in a conclusion, the Hoist database is uh, very useful for our network maintenance, can provide the useful information. And uh, for the using my APNIC, how many of you are APNIC members are using my APNIC? One. So you are not <laughs> APNIC members. <laughs> OK, so maybe I will just uh, show, the, show the, that one in, on my laptop directly. I will not go through the slides very, each of them. I will not go through this very detailed. So I will just show you, because these are related to the portal, related to the portal, how, how to use my APNIC. I will show some basic uh, parts of this one. OK, so here I will go to the... Because the, uh, why, uh, why should I just speed up? Because the, my APNIC, as I just logged in, my APNIC is uh, used uh, for the for APNIC member, for APNIC member, and then we can we can maintain our resources. So here is the home home page, and uh, what I said one one click IPv6 can be here. So if you don't have IPv6 resource. You can here there is a one click IPv6. You can click to get an IPv6 address, and for the who is updates and these are some quick link and live chat. So we can talk with our our mem help desk. So here is live chat and then we can talk. You can talk with them for the help from help desk, and also you can go to our APNIC portal. We also have the help desk. Okay and. Uh, one important one is the resources. As I showed you, the IPv4, what are the IPv4 addresses you have? So here, a little bit slow. Wow, it's so slow. So these are the, what are the IPv6, IPv4 addresses I have. So you can see we can, we can, oh, connection is done. Okay, what are the resources and then you can add the assignments in public, assignments in private, and maybe move the private to public, public to private, and the reverse DNS delegation, so I will discuss later. And so these are the blocks you can, we can do the further delegation inside here if you are this is uh, allocation ipv4 ipv6 so all the resources are listed here are listed here so here you can see this list has been used to which which uh, ratio so hd ratio we can see how many parts has been used because you can put the assignments here and then you can see how many blocks has been used for your for your ip blocks 
can see and uh, then if larger than which one we can tell you and then maybe you need to apply uh, another block based on your usage and the AS number okay different AS number and then you can apply these are the resources and uh, request uh, I showed you you can request the resources from here I want more IPv4 addresses but uh, we will check how many IPv4 addresses we can check all the resources you are holding now so we can for APNIC uh, we can check this information and here this is my account if I want to apply IPv4 address Maybe I show some parts and uh, because it's too slow, I don't want to waste the time here. Yeah, just to show you when you apply IPv4 address, he will give you some selections based on your criteria. You can see the, you can also read the current policy and we will, from here, For maximum delegation limit and available. So then you can click. Uh, he will check what what are you what, how many of you have how many resources have received from here, and then from for the next. And here you can see is uh, so that's why I introduce a lot about the allocation and the assignment. So if this is for allocation for the further distribution and also maybe it's a assignment. If this is for the assignment and then for your own use, whether it's multi homing network, whether it's a IXP, whether you are from the critical infrastructure, so these are related to the, our policy I mentioned before. If you are multi homing, so later you need to say, Oh, I will multi I am already multi homed to two ISP or maybe I will multi home to two ISP in inside one year or in how long time you need to say and to show the evidence of the plan or something and then to continue. So here is the for the APNIC, uh, who has the my APNIC uh, accounts and then can go through like this. Okay, and uh, some out routed ranges. So whether these are routed, he will he needs to tell you. And then this is uh, mainly about the uh, resources and uh, who is update, who is update. So if you want to change some part, for example, or uh, maybe some raw objects, I want to change, and then you can change this here. Who is update? Then change the information and the bulk. Who is update? Maybe you want to change a group of the resources. For example, your company has moved from one location to another location, and the you want to change for the raw objects, personal objects, some information. You can do the bulk. Uh, who is updates and contact the detailed updates, and also can be done here. And uh, then reverse DNS. Later we can see add the reverse delegation. For IP, we will add the reverse DNS, the domain name from here, and uh, RPKI, RPKI for the route for the route objects. We want to add for the route and uh, originated from which AS number. This will can be created from here. Resource certification, and the route objects are created from here. So he mentioned some route objects is up to our members whether he will he has created from here and the resource transfer also from here resource transfer so I am the source holder I want to transfer some resource to the others and then I will transfer some resource to another one or maybe you want to receive so you can receive resource into my account I initiate the uh, transfer and the other side and after after APNIC approved and then I can receive the resource and the requ request the transfer pre-approval. So here, what is request transfer pre-approval? So we are waiting for the waiting for the information before a transfer is initiated. 
And so here is for the pre-approval is waiting. And return the IPv4 resources. So if you want to return, return IPv4. So all these basic operations can be done from the from APNIC uh, websites. And also we have some admin parts. So the other pages, you are detailed the information and the billing history, annual fee calculation, calculator and the contact uh, the different parts. So if you want to contact uh, the help desk and view the pending re resource request and the events. Through the events, I, I'm not sure whether you are, through the events you can see, what can you see? Our training. So this is our conference, our e-learning and our workshop. You can see we will have a IPv6 deployment uh, workshop in the Philippines. Shane will go there, yeah. <laughs> she will go to the Philippines to do the workshop here. And so we can see, we can see the information from, from here. And uh, as I told you from, for Brunei, I think it's also, it should be here. Yeah, here, this one. This one is in Brunei, yeah. It's from the March 20th to 22nd, yeah. So some kind of the, this information will be listed uh, from, also from the my APNIC. Yeah, okay. So these are the portal of my APNIC. And uh, through this way, because we only, maybe only two of, two of them are using my APNIC, so I go through this way a little bit quickly. And uh, then we will move to the second part, uh, next part of the autonomous system. And uh, these slides uh, you can download later. And okay, so I will move to the autonomous system number. And uh, for the auto AS number, this number is also one resource. One resource you can, you can apply from APNIC. And uh, for the AS number, this one is uh, globally unique identifies for the IP networks. In fact, uh, the, the name should be the autonomous number is AS. AS is used for a group of the routers who are have the identical, the, the same routing policies, administrative policies for themselves. And then we call this is one autonomous system, just a group of routers. So maybe for one ISP, and then this group of the routers, they are using the same policy. And uh, then we call this, they are, in, they are belonging to one AS but belonging to one AS. And for the other company, maybe they are belonging to the other AS, and they are using different policies. So the policies are different, and then they, will, they are belonging to different AS. And the AS number is mainly used to represent the different AS. And so for the AS number, and the one network, okay, I want to use this, this number, the other network use another number. So if you want to present your routing information via BGP, you need to take your AS number. And this AS number in the internet will be the public AS number. Public AS number. So here is about the definition of the AS and AS number. Maybe some of you will say, I'm also running a group of routers, but I don't have AS number. Why? Because, because maybe you, you, because you are not running BGP. So only when you are running BGP, you want to use the different policies and the, to filter the routes and what routes I want to save, save the receiver from the other network, the border gateway routing protocol. So if you are not running BGP, you said, okay, I'm only use the static route to talk with my upstream ISP. Then you don't need the, you don't need the, uh, AS number. So in this case, you don't need AS number. But for some company, they said, oh, we have different policies with my upstream. I want to filter this, this route, and when I send the routes to him, I want to change this, this information, and when I receive, I want to change the other information. So different policies, then you need to run BGP. And uh, maybe you, then you want to pr also present your information on the internet, and then you need the public AS number. So you, this ISP, they will come to APNIC to apply the public AS number. And uh, I hope this is clear for you about the which case we need the AS number. And uh, here is one example, okay, the color is too light, okay. And uh, here you can see for this group, 
this group of the routers, okay, and then we can call this is one autonomous system because they are running, they are running the routing protocols. And uh, for his ISP, I want to announce my prefix to one AppStream ISP, and uh, his policy is different from me. I want to do some filtering and uh, do some change some parameters, so he will run BGP. He wants the public AS number, and uh, maybe to the other ISP also similar configuration, similar situation. So in this case, in this case, and then he will need a public AS number to be used to announce the prefix to the internet. And uh, for his customers, maybe he has some customers, but uh, this customer maybe they are t maybe they don't need the AS number, public AS number. So I, as I said, maybe he is using a static route, static route pointed to him, and but he will help him to announce the prefix, announce prefix. So not every network you need the AS number. So it's only based on your situation, based on your situation, whether you are running BGP. Maybe some network, they are running BGP, but they only need a private AS number. So like a private IP address, private IP address. So nowadays, in, maybe in the office, we are using 10.0.0.0, .0 .0 .0 this block of IP address. But this IP address is, will not be present in internet. And the similar for the AS number, for the AS number, we also have the private paths, private paths. So these are, for the public internet, you need to come to APNIC to apply. Come to APNIC to apply the uh, uh, private uh, AS number. But uh, if you said, I don't need to publish my AS number in the internet. So I only need to, for example, here his customer is running BGP. He need an AS number. But uh, he doesn't need, maybe he said, okay, when my routes are announced into the internet, I'm using the same policy as the ISP. So there is no difference. So my ISP can represent me to announce my prefix. It's okay. So they talk with, the, between them, maybe they want to BGP the power for, power for some tools. And, uh, but here, here he can use a private AS number, private AS number. I hope this is uh, clear. So one network, one network, uh, maybe they, they need the AS number, maybe they don't need the, pub, maybe they need the private AS number, it's okay. They don't need the public AS number. So only when in your network, you need uh, the public AS number, then you will come to APNIC to apply the resource, apply the resource. But uh, for this one, we also have the policy, have a policy later you can see. You can say, when do I need an AS number? So we have the RFC as a guide, as a guide. So multi-homed network to different providers. So if you are multi-homed to different providers, and then you said, okay, for different provider, different policies, and then I need a public AS number, different uh, the public AS number, and also routing policy is different to external peers, so you need to describe your situation and then, then you can apply the AS number. You can apply a public AS number. So here is for the AS number, and uh, then you, based on your situation. And the AS number, you can see, we have some, also have some development. At the beginning, AS number is only 16 bits, 16 bits. And uh, same as IPv4, because the internet is growing very fast. So. AS number, 16-bit AS number is not enough. It's not enough for, the, for us. So we, since 2007, we start to use the 32-bit 32, 32 AS number. We start to use the 32 AS number. So it, the range is much larger. It's much larger. So here is the, and this is the public internet uh, range. So, and uh, maybe you ask uh, who will get the 2-bit AS number, who will get the 4-bit AS, 2-byte AS number, who will get the 4-byte AS number. And uh, nowadays, if you come to APNIC, and we, will, we put the, all of them in the same pool. So we didn't separate to be 2-byte or 4-byte, bytes, four bytes, and then you will get the pro from the same pool, you will get the IP 4-byte four four AS number. We combine them to be one pool. We didn't distinguish them now. Okay, and uh, for some routers, 
this is about the uh, implementation part. And uh, so for some routers, some old routers, maybe they cannot support the four byte AS number. What can we do? And then on these routers, he will record this four byte AS number. He doesn't know. He saw that all the AS number should be two bytes, 16 bit. So if this is long, longer, so it will be marked as the two, three, four, five, six. So if you get a uh, 40,000, and then will be two, three, four, five, six. If you get a uh, 70,000, the router also marks as uh, two, three, four, five, six. So detailed uh, parts I will not explain, but uh, here we have the four by test number. And uh, then I can go to some, here is the request. So whether you can apply a public AS number, you should be, uh, pro, should be uh, multi, multi-homed, multi-homed to upstream and then have a provider independent address space so you s if you want to if you want to announce the prefix you should have your provider independent that means you have a portable address okay so this is the eligibility criteria uh, listed here you you will have the multi home the intent or maybe already multi homing and then you have a portable address otherwise this address is not belonging to you. Is ISP will be responsible for this block. So you have a portable address, and then based on this eligibility, you can apply a public IP address, public public AS number. Sorry, requesting and uh, then AS number. So AS number is portable. AS number. If you apply IP the portable the number from from AS APNIC and uh, the AS number is portable. But uh, the member, if a member requests the AS number for his customer, for his customer, so the AS number is non-portable. So if the customer leave this I leave this member and then he needs to return this this one this resource to this member and the member will return to APNIC. So this. This is uh, we need to a little bit be careful, and from two byte to four byte delegation, and so I mentioned at the beginning. So before 2007, we only two byte AS number, and then start uh, we we started process the four byte AS number if requested, and since 2009, and then by default you will get a four byte AS number, four byte larger than 65536 and then process the two byte as number as requested. And nowadays, and since the 2010, all are using the, from the same pool, so we put them in the same pool, so we, we merge, them, merge them together, and so we will not distinguish the two byte or four byte. See here is for the delegation, so we have a development for the AS number, and uh, then for the AS num this is transfer, we can do the transfer for the AS number and uh, no transfer fees are involved. And also the object, uh, object are listed here, object listed here. And the AS number can be wor worked in the RPSL, RPSL when we configure the policy, when we configure the policy import export, Should, can be here. And here is the global distribution for AS number. We have the, you can see, the, what are the public AS number for the four byte? This is only four byte, only four byte for the, from the 65536, four bytes. Okay, this is the this delegation part. How, who, are, who has delegated? So, RIPEN, CC, Next Range, NAC, Lake, Arin, and APNIC 4763. So, this is just a, a graph. So that's about the four byte AS number. And uh, then for, from the VCS, from here, you can see the, all the AS numbers. From here, I, I have this link, lab.apnic.net.vcs, and then you can see inside, this is inside the Vietnam. Inside the Vietnam and then different AS, they are connected. They are connected with each other. So this is, we can see this, you can see this for different countries. Okay, and uh, since the lunch time is coming, I will, yeah, we still have two parts. We will finish these two parts because these two parts kind of uh, introduction of the information. Reverse DNS, reverse DNS. So maybe some of you heard about the DNS servers. 
but what is reverse DNS? DNS is for the domain name to IP address, yes? I will type the www.google.com, and then for my route, for my PC, in fact, he needed the IP address. So he will go to the DNS server. To DNS server will tell him what is the IP address for this, for this, for this uh, domain name, the www.google and maybe server.abnic.net. So this is the IP address. This is for what DNS. And uh, for the one IP address, if we want to get the domain name, this way is the reverse DNS. We call this reverse DNS. So on the same DNS server, you can put the forward DNS zone file and also the reverse DNS zone file. Both of the zone files can be put on put there. And for the, why do I need the reverse DNS? And uh, here you, there are some security issues. You can see for the service denial, and we have the for some anonymous. Uh, FTP servers. So some user come in, he will check whether there is a domain name for this IP address. And if there is a reverse DNS, there is uh, the re reverse DNS that was configured for this IP address, and then he will allow the access. Otherwise, we will be denied. And also for troubleshooting, you can see nowadays when you trace route, for example, I trace route to www.google.com, and then one each step, if on the router, if on now what, if by default it will be next IP address, next IP address, next IP address. But nowadays, normally we can see the name, the name, the domain name of the IP address. You can see, for example, server one dot google dot c. I just suppose you can see the name, not the IP address, because he did the reverse, reverse DNS delegation. So we we can get the name of this equipment and not the IP address. So this is, and then we can know, oh, this server is in Hong Kong, or this server is in Cambodia, or because the name will represent some, some information. But these are defined by you, by different uh, companies, okay? Google, they defined the name, the name for the IP addresses of the router. And also the spam identification. Here is about the, for the email. For email, if for the mail server, we cannot find the domain name for this. There is no reverse DNS configured for this IP of the mail server. And then we can consider this is a spam, spam email. So this is, these are some use, use case can be used for the reverse DNS. Reverse DNS. And uh, so for the reverse DNS tree, reverse DNS tree is like this. You can see for the DNS tree is like our dot, and then we have dot net, then dot org, dot com. And for the reverse DNS, reverse DNS, he is going to the ARPA and the Indra. And this is in Indra, this is for the IPv4. Later we can see for IPv6, IP, IP6. And then you can see for the uh, a little bit like class A, class B, class C. So for the class A, the first, uh, first, uh, first byte and then the second byte and the third byte and then you can see this is, this block of IP address is 202.64.22 and then he's a reverse DNS reverse in the reverse DNS zone file we will use this to represent one address 22.64.202.inadra.arpa so this Block of list slash twenty four two zero two sixty four twenty two will be represented like this. So one IP address mapped to the another the domain name. So this is the reverse reverse domain for IPv four. I will not explain this technology here very detailed. And uh, for the IPv four for IPv six, IPv six is the same under the upper and then under the IP six. And IP, IP6, and uh, based on your IP addresses, and then we can generate the same the same reverse DNS for this information. And uh, so maybe you'll see. So I need for yeah, for the for the IP addresses for the IP addresses for the servers. You need to define the, the define the reverse DNS information. So where are the information is in the DNS zone file. So this is another zone file. 
reverse zone file. Under the zone file, there is a, for from from domain to IP address, we have a record and called a record for the re, for the forward in the forward DS zone file. For the reverse, for the reverse zone file, and then you will have a pointer. You will have pointer. So for this block, for this block, this is a, so maybe you will say, what is this block? 192.168.1.0. So this is one block like this. And then if dot one, if one, the IP address is dot one, and then his, his name is gateway of dot company dot org. Org and the router company.org and dot two will point to the name server for the company.org. So here from in this file, in this file you can see each IP each IP will have the his pointer. And maybe this block has his pointer. Pointer means the the domain name. Okay, reverse domain name. So we need to create maybe you'll say so what is related to APNIC? So APNIC will not create this for you. You need to configure this file on your name server, on your name server. So then what related to APNIC? Then you put your name server. You put your name server on my APNIC, on my APNIC. So we want to, here, we want you to, we don't, we, we will not host your name server, but you need to register register your name server the name server for this for example oh you got a slash 22 and then for this slash 22 who are the name server for this block of, that means where are the where are the zone files so you need to put a name server and the name server you need to put into our our the my APNIC account and then so you we we will not host your name server you need to guarantee your name server configured correctly and then it's online and then you tell APNIC, okay, this is my name server, and uh, name server one, name server two, for this block of the IP address. So here, so this is what we recommended you to do. So from this part, I want to tell you is the information, why do we need a reverse DNS for some security issues? And then related to APNIC, you need to, for yourself, you need to put a, create a zone file for your blocks. And then register, put the zone, the name server, name server information in my APNIC related to this block. Okay, and uh, for the how to create a reverse delegation, the reverse delegation is a, a little bit like the classful, classful situation. So it's based on the slash 24 delegation. So if you have a slash 22, you need to create a four slash 24 delegation. So here is the, about the uh, reverse delegation for IPv4. Is uh, uh, if you need some, if you have any queries, and uh, then we have, we also have one, another material related to how to create a reverse DNS, and you can find uh, find this from APNIC training website. Okay, and the IPv4 is going to slash 16.24, and for the for the IPv6. IPv6, and uh, you can see if you get a slash 32 delegation, and then only need to create one domain object. But uh, if you get a slash 35, you need to divide into a slash 36, two slash 36. So you have to create two, two separate domain objects. So this is uh, when you cre uh, related to when you create the domain objects. Okay, so our responsibility. So for APNIC, we were managing because people will ask, oh, what is the name server for this block of IP address? APNIC will can provide, can provide the reverse domain, the server, the name server, only the name server. But for our, for the members, for the members, for ISP, you should be familiar with the procedure and uh, maintain your name server, maintain your name server. So here is the reverse DNS, and then for the, how to create the reverse DNS, you, you can go to the resource, reverse DNS delegation in the my APNIC and then you put, okay, for this slash 22, what is my name server, you can see. Slash 22, this is, for example, the ns1.11.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0
example dot one. So you put the name server. But uh, normally we want to put at least the two name servers. We want you to put the two name servers here and the maintainer. So you can create the information. Okay, so here is the domain objects. You can see for this block of IP addresses, you can see reverse zone for 61.45.248 slash 24. And then the domain name, the reverse zone file, the domain name is here. And the name server, you can see these are the two name server. So after you add this information, the domain object has been created. Okay, and uh, any questions here? I think the question is, uh, when can we have lunch? <laughs> and uh, the last one, RPKI. RPKI is about the resource certification. This is about the, for the route, route PKI. And uh, then this is uh, related uh, for us, uh, related to APNIC. We want you to create the route object and uh, related to the source AS number, create this matching information on the my APNIC. We want you to create this information. And if you have any queries how you have, how to implement RPKI, you can also ask APNIC and we can, okay, you can ask, okay, how about the implementation? Because you know, in the morning, we also have another session of RPKI in the other room. So in this part, I would only go through, okay, so these are the, what is RPKI? RPKI, we, because for the route, Routing information published on the on the routing table. You want to know, you want to know whether this route is really from this AS number, because maybe some bad bad people, the hacker, maybe the they will announce this prefix from the other network, from the other network. So for you, I am here. I'm waiting for the routes, and who will be the right source? Should it be from AS one or from AS two? So. This way, how can I check? How can I check? So because of this problem, there are some, some incidents, incidents on the, on the internet, and a lot, I think a lot of incidents. So for example, uh, some people, some network engineer, they announced uh, some prefix not belonging to them and announced them to, this, to the internet. And uh, so the traffic will go to this website, go to this, go to the AS, but uh, there is no server and uh, we cannot access what we want. So this is uh, some kind of a route leaking on the internet. How to avoid uh, this problem? The RPKI can be helped. So that means I am an APNIC member. I have this, this IP block. I would say, OK, this block should only from AS2. I will put the matching information in my APNIC. OK, for, one nine, for example, for 100.0.0 should be from AS2. Then. If someone, if the other uh, ISP, he has implemented the RPKI, he has synchronized. If he has received some routes, the 100.0.0.0 is from AS3, and then they are not matched with what information inside the RPKI database, and then he can drop this route. So my I will not use this route as a valid route. So here is the main main purpose why we need an RPKI to solve the problem, whether the routes are originated from the right source. Right source, so here, help to secure internet routing by validate routes. We need to validate whether, okay, you are from the, the correct AS number. Okay, so for the organizations, we need to to, they have applied the resource. As I said, okay, I will configure. Okay, this IP address should, this prefix should be announced from this AS number. Okay, the upstream must check the whole database. So we need to check when we announce some prefixes. And uh, the source certification here, the resource holder, and then with the resources, and they need to they need to match configure this information. Okay. And uh, ROA is the route origin authorization you can create it. I, let me check whether I have that. Sh oh, here. This is the how to create. In the resource RPKI, I want to operate in the RPKI portal. So in this one, enable the resource certification. Then you can create. 
Okay, so for this prefix, 2001 colon DBF is from 45192. So this part is created by yourself. You need to keep sh make sure these are correct. Because some people ask, if they configure wrong information, then they sub they, so everyone should configure the correct information. So APNIC will not check because we don't know whether this block is used to match this AS number. So you need to guarantee when you configure when you configure the information on the my APNIC portal, you need to make sure these prefix are from this correct AS number. Correct this this number. So you need to configure the correct information, and uh, this information will be synchronized with the RPKI repository, and then your network RPKI server. Then you can you can synchronize with the repository. Not only APNIC and Ripen CC and uh, Arin. Okay, they we synchronize the all, all over the world, and then you can check. And uh, so here is creating raw objects. And then here is some suggestion. Maybe you didn't configure, and then we just suggest the raw, and then you can create. And uh, so in this part, I would only show you my APNIC has this has this function to configure, and then you can for the detailed parts you can check with the on APNIC page. And if you are interested to deploy RPKI and have uh, some further questions, you can also query. Ask me and also our our other APNIC staff, and we are here for this conference, so we are happy to answer questions. Any questions here for this session? <laughs> Thank you for staying here. Thank you very much. Thank you for the support. <laughs> okay, so that's it for this part, and uh, see you. Yeah. Oh. Hmm?